Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing groups of order 30. Okay, so in the previous video what we did is we succeeded in proving that if we have a group of order 30 that there exists always a subgroup of order 15 inside that group of order 30. And the way that we did this is we found a CLOV5 subgroup of the group of order 30 and a CLOV3 subgroup of the group of order 30 and we called them capital P and capital Q respectively. And then what we did is we producted these two together, these two subgroups together. We created P producted with Q, and we proved that this would indeed be a subgroup of order 15 inside the group of order 30. Okay, and therefore we proved the existence of a subgroup of size 15. Now what I want to do is study this group of order uh, 15 inside the group of order 30 in more detail. Okay, and we're going to use here knowledge from a previous video in the playlist on group theory, namely the video entitled Groups of Order P times Q. You see, a group of order 15, which this uh, capital P times capital Q is, so this is a group of order 15, if we split the order 15 down into its prime factorization, it's 5 times 3 i.e. its prime factorization is one prime times another prime. Now there is a lot you can say about groups uh, of these sorts of orders where you've got one prime times another prime and this one's a particularly nice one and we discuss these sorts of groups in a lot of detail in the video entitled Groups of Order uh, PQ. Okay. Uh, the reason this is very nice is because the smaller prime 3 does not divide the larger prime 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, 4 is not a multiple of 3. And therefore, uh, we can conclude a lot about groups of order 15. Namely, we can conclude that there is only one isomorphism class of groups of order 15, okay, which is the cyclic group on the set of 15 elements. So I'm actually instantly able to conclude that this subgroup of order 15, uh, capital P times capital Q here, is isomorphic to the cyclic group on the set of 15 elements, Z15. Okay, I can instantly do that from my knowledge from the video on groups of order uh, P times Q. Indeed, the, there is only one isomorphism class of groups of order 15. So if I've got a subgroup of order 15, it has to be isomorphic to that. It's like having uh, a group of order a prime number. You can instantly conclude what it's isomorphic to. Okay, the same is true uh, in the case of 15 because of the fact that it's uh, the prime factorization of 15 is one prime times another prime and the smaller prime doesn't uh, divide the larger prime, subtract one. Okay, now, so I, I know a lot now about the structure of that subgroup. Now, what I can say further to this is that actually this only has two uh, CLOV subgroups. Okay, so the order of this is 5 times 3, so it will have CLOV5 subgroups and CLOV3 subgroups by uh, the first CLOV theorem. However, in the video on groups of order PQ, we show uh, that groups of order 15 only have a very simple subgroup structure. So they have the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup, but then they only have two other subgroups, one CLOV5 subgroup and one CLOV3 subgroup. Now, of course, the way that you construct the product of P and Q means that both P and Q will be contained within the product of P and Q. Okay, so P will actually be the CLOV5 subgroup for this, and Q will be the only CLOV3 subgroup. And let me stress, inside this group of order 15, those are the only CLOV5 um, subgroup and CLOV3 subgroup. Okay, so in particular, P and Q are going to be characteristic inside P times Q. So P is characteristic inside the subgroup of order 15, and so is Q. Q is going to be characteristic inside uh, the product of P and Q. Okay, and remember a characteristic subgroup is one of uh, these subgroups that is fixed by all automorphisms of the larger group. And because there's only one subgroup of size uh, five and only one subgroup of size three, which as I say is something that you need to watch the video on groups of order P times Q in order to understand, we can conclude that uh, indeed they are characteristic inside P times Q because any automorphism must send a subgroup onto uh, another subgroup of the same order. 
if there's only one subgroup of that order, then it must send it onto itself. Okay, right, so both of these subgroups are going to be characteristic inside at P times Q. Okay, there is only one seed of um, 3 subgroup and only one seed of 5 subgroup. I claim that what we can actually do now is use this to conclude that there is only one seed of 3 subgroup and only one seed of 5 subgroup inside the entire group of order 30. Okay, now remember, previously when we were trying to prove that uh, P times Q is even a subgroup of G, uh, we d did a proof by contradiction where we assumed initially that neither of them was normal, which involved saying that you had more than one seed of 5 subgroup and more than one seed of 3 subgroup, and we proved that that couldn't be the case. So we proved that there's at least, in, for one of them, the seed of 3 subgroups or the seed of 5 subgroups, there can only be one but we didn't prove for both of them. What we're now going to use is this information to conclude that in the group capital G of order 30, there is only one seed of 3 subgroup, so M3 is equal to 1, and M5 is equal to 1. So P is the only seed of 5 subgroup, and Q is the only seed of 3 subgroup. So indeed, to construct the subgroup of order 15, you took the only uh, seed of 3 subgroup and the only seed of 5 subgroup and producted those together, okay? And the way that we can conclude it is because these are characteristic inside the subgroup of order 15. If we can prove that the subgroup of order 15 is normal inside the group capital G, then we have proven that these are normal inside the group capital G. Because if you've got a small subgroup that is characteristic inside an intermediate subgroup, which is then normal inside a larger subgroup, you can conclude that the smallest ones are then normal inside the larger ones. Okay, so if I can prove that the product of P and Q is normal inside of G, then this allows me to conclude that P is normal in G and Q is normal in G. Of course, if P was just normal inside P times Q, and then P times Q was normal inside G, I wouldn't be able to do that, but because I've got this stronger version of normality, that P is characteristic inside um, P times Q, and then P times Q is normal inside G, I can conclude it. And if you want proof of that in more detail, do watch the video on characteristic subgroups. Okay, right. Uh, so, I need to then prove that the product of P times Q is normal inside G. Well, this is extremely simple because the index of P times Q in G has to be equal to 2. So, the index of P times Q in G must equal 2 because this has order 15, this has order 30. So, when you partition G up into left or right cosets of P times Q, you must just get two of them. Okay, what that then means is if I draw a picture of this, so if this little box is my group capital G, and here is my subgroup of size 15, P times Q, what this means is that if I take the right coset partition or the left coset partition, they are identical to one another, and that forces uh, this to be a normal subgroup. So let me explain that in more detail. Okay, so to prove that this is a normal subgroup, what of course we need to do is prove that for all little g is an element of the group capital G, that if you conjugate p times q by little g, it gives you p times q back again. Okay, now if you pick little g from p times q, i.e. from the subgroup itself, and use that to conjugate the subgroup, of course you're going to get the subgroup back again. Okay? So all we need to worry about, uh, and that's just because, you know, this is a group in its own right, and when you conjugate a group by an element inside of it, you do just get the entire group back again. It represents an inner automorphism of that subgroup, okay? Uh, so all we need to worry about are elements little g outside of p times q, okay? Now, um, because of the fact that the index of p times q in g is 2, what I can say is that if I construct the right coset of p time, sorry, the left coset is the one I'm writing down here, the left coset of p times q under an element little g that is outside of p times q. So I'm picking a little g now that is outside of p times q. So I've already argued that it's fine if we pick a g inside here, now I'm taking one from outside, okay? Now if I take the left coset of p times q under g, I get this box here, I hope you'll agree, okay? Uh, now, that must be the same as if I take the right coset of P times Q under G, because there's nothing else it can be. It can't be inside P times Q, so it must be all of these elements, and that's the beauty of it being indexed too. So the left coset 
of p times q under an element that's outside of p times q must equal uh, the right coset of p times q under that element, little g. Okay, now, so what this means is that if I uh, left multiply all the elements of p times q uh, by g, I will get all of this, and if I right multiply all of the elements of p times q by g, I'll get again all of this. So what I can now do is I can consider going through all this set here and multiplying them by g inverse on the uh, right this time. Okay, so this is a set. It's all the elements uh, of p times q left multiplied by g. Now what I'm going to do is then take all the elements in this set. So I'll colour this in. So this is the set underlined in red. And I'm now uh, right multiplying them all by g inverse. Now, because this set is equal to this set, what I could do, this will be equivalent to just taking all the elements of this set and then right multiplying them by g inverse. Okay, so I hope you understand what I'm doing here. I'm saying that if I take all the elements of this set and right multiply them by g inverse, it's the same as if I take all the elements of this set and right multiply them by g inverse. Okay, but all the elements in this set are just elements of p times q right multiplied by g. Okay, so when I right multiply by g inverse, they'll go back to what they were in p times q. So this will just be p times q. Okay, and therefore I get that if I conjugate the elements of p times q by g, which of course is what this set on the left is going to equal, it gives me p times q. So that's why if you can say that the right and left cosets are, are the same, if the right coset partition is the same as the left coset partition, which it must be if you're dealing with a group of a subgroup of index two in the larger group, you can say that that subgroup is normal inside of the larger group. So I can now successfully conclude that uh, this subgroup of order fifteen p times q is normal inside G. Okay, so because these smaller subgroups are characteristic inside p times q, and this is normal inside g, you can then conclude that p is normal inside g, and q is normal inside g. Okay, now p is a subgroup of size 5, q is a subgroup of size 3, so these are going to be c log 5 subgroups and c log 3 subgroups of the larger group capital G. Okay, so being normal inside G means that they are going to be the only C log 5 subgroups and C log 3 subgroups inside of the group capital G, because remember, all C log 5 subgroups and C log 3 subgroups are conjugate to one another, or in fact, that's more general, all C log subgroups are conjugate to one another. Okay, so if I can conjugate capital P by any elements of the larger group and just get capital P back again, which is what's being normal means, that must mean there are no other C log 5 subgroups, and equivalently for uh, C log 3 subgroups here. Okay, so in fact, you can actually conclude stronger here. You can say that P is characteristic in G and Q is characteristic in G because they are the only C log 5 subgroups and C log 3 subgroups. So there we have successfully concluded that the number of C log 5 subgroups is 1, and the number of C log 3 subgroups is 1 as well. Okay, so to conclude then, a group of order 30 has precisely one C log 3 subgroup and one C log 5 subgroup. If you then product those two subgroups together, you will get a uh, subgroup of order 15, which will be isomorphic to the cyclic group uh, on the set of 15 elements. Okay, and that's overall what we've learned from this group of or uh, from this video on groups of order 30.